It may come as a surprise to you, but Mario Kart DS is my favourite entry in the Mario Kart franchise. Franchise? Series? Meh, I don't really care. And one of the reasons why that's the case is because of Rob, but another reason is the track selection. You don't just release a game with tracks like Luigi's Mansion, Delfino Square, Shroom Ridge, TikTok Clock, Airship Fortress, Bowser Castle, and of course, Rainbow Road, without going on to create one of the best Mario Kart games. However, the track selection in this game is not perfect. Far from it, actually. And today, I'm going to be talking about all of the tracks that I'd make adjustments to, as well as altering the selection of retro tracks to improve the selection overall. Now I do recognise that all of what I'm about to say is purely from a hindsight perspective. Nintendo simply chose the easier tracks to make, as it not only allowed them for a good starting point to experiment with retros, but it also allowed them to play it safe when it came to the hardware limitations of the DS. And because of this, I do acknowledge that this track selection would have been highly unrealistic given the circumstances, but I also see it as a benefit to look back in hindsight to see how utterly shit the track selection is and how it can be improved. So, without wasting any more time, let's have a look at what changes I'd make to the track selection. The first thing I want to have a look at is the changes I'd make to the Nitro track selection. Now, changing the Nitro tracks is a lot harder than changing the retros, for obvious reasons. And instead of making all new tracks to replace the shit ones, I'm just going to go over some of the changes that I would make to the tracks, whether it's layout, hazards, shortcuts, whatever it may be. First off, Let's go over some of the tracks that won't be seeing any changes. These tracks are as follows. Yoshi Falls, Cheap Cheap Beach, Luigi's Mansion, Mario Circuit, Dolphino Square, Shroom Ridge, TikTok Clock, Airship Fortress, Peach Gardens, Bowser Castle, and Rainbow Road. Actually, I take that back. Put an S on Bowser Castle. Mm, that's better. It was always weird to me that they did that. Now it may be obvious too that I've changed the order of which the tracks are. This is because, in the original order, Mario Circuit was slap in the middle of the Star Cup. This was always weird to me, as every other game has had Mario Circuit in the Flower Cup, most of the time being first. So, I made changes. It was weird that it was in the Star Cup, and we all know it. Now, for the rest of the tracks, I'll go over exactly what changes I'd want to see. First off, let's get one of the worst tracks out of the way first. Figure 8 Circuit. Now, I understand its simplicity. And I wouldn't want to change that at all. It's the first track, and I want to keep it feeling like one. So instead, I gave it a layout similar to the likes of Toad Circuit or Wii Luigi Circuit. As well as this, I'd throw in some boost panels and a couple of Goombas on the track, maybe some oil spills too. Fuck it. The theming of F1 style track would stay, so it would make sense. This would help the track to not be utter shit to the point where it's unplayable would also allow for a good starting track without going too overboard. And since it's not a figure 8 anymore, it needs a new name. And I decided to give it the name Formula Circuit, which fits the theme well. The next track we'll be reworking is Desert Hills. Now, I don't hate Desert Hills nearly as much as others do. In fact, I think it's actually pretty good in Mario Kart Wii due to the inside drifting bikes and tricking mechanics. But neither of those are a thing here, so I'm going to make some changes. The biggest issue with the layout is the twists and turns throughout the track. Also the fact that the name is Desert Hills, yet it doesn't utilise the hill part of the track, instead opting to go around them. So I propose that the track instead leads you up the hills and down them again. The track starts mostly the same, but upon getting to the hills, you drive to the top before going back down again. Down the hills there can be fire snakes and pokies across the track, making it a lot more dangerous to drive down. I think this would make the track a lot less bland, as desert tracks aren't well known for utilising the z-axis very well, if dry dry desert and sunset wilds are anything to go off of. But if any track is going to use the z-axis well, it should be the track called Desert Hills. Next up, it's the fan favourite, Waluigi Pinball. Waluigi Pinball is a track that I don't know whether I can change much. Layout wise I think it's fine, it just needs a few mushroom shortcuts, because currently you don't use mushrooms like anywhere it'd be easy to add some just on some of the turns similar to big blue now i know what you're thinking this wouldn't fit the theme as a normal pinball table wouldn't have that to that i say it's a mario kart track it needs it aside from that i think it's good to go next up it's dk pass dk pass is a fine track as it is i think its biggest issue is that it was immediately overshadowed by dk summit in the next game as a track i think it plays quite well so I don't even know how I change it. 
So, I resorted to the next best thing, changing the theme. Something I noticed is that there is very little representation for the themes of the levels in Donkey Kong Country. We have DK Jungle Parkway, DK Mountain and DK Jungle for Jungle Rep, and DK Summit and the aforementioned DK Pass for the Snowy Level Rep. That's it. So, easy solution is to replace the Snowy theme with another theme, and I chose the Temple theme. It's not too far-fetched of an idea to change the theme, and it could work quite well. Going up the hill to visit a temple, then driving back down. The track's name will be renamed to DK Temple to fit the new theming. This would help differentiate the track from the following DK Summit track, while not changing anything about the track because I honestly see no issues with it. Then the final track I'd make changes to is Wario Stadium. Honestly, I wouldn't change much to it. The only changes I'd make is to dig a few sections into the ground a bit, like the A Deluxe remake did, and remove these bumps. I don't like them. That's it. The rest of the track is fine. And that's it for the changes that I would make to the Nitro track selection. I think I made some good changes, and some much needed ones in some cases. Now, onto the reason I made this video. The Retro Tracks. The biggest issue with the Retro Tracks is the approach the Nintendo took when deciding which ones to add. Within the Retro Track selection, there are six circuit tracks. Adding on the two Nitros, that's two cups worth of circuits in this game. In other words, a quarter of the game consists of circuit tracks, which is not okay. As well as this, there are so many tracks that just suck ass. So I went through and reworked the track selection to accommodate for some better picks. However, not all of them changed. These are all of the tracks that made the cut. SNES Mario Circuit 1, N64 Moo Moo Farm, GCN Yoshi Circuit, N64 Frappe Snowland, GBA Bowser Castle 2, GBA Luigi Circuit, GCN Mushroom Bridge, SNES Cooper Beach 2, N64 Banshee Boardwalk, N64 Choco Mountain, and GBA Sky Garden. To be honest, a lot of the tracks stayed. I wasn't expecting this many to remain going into this, but it turns out I like a lot of these tracks. There are definitely a few things worth mentioning. Firstly, all of the N64 tracks have remained. Why? Well, I honestly feel that all around, they were strong choices. Choco Mountain, Frappe Snowland, and Banshee Boardwalk are all very strong tracks. And while Moomoo Farm isn't as strong of a pick, I also don't see it returning in any future games instead. So, all four of them stayed. Not only that, but Mario Circa 1 also made the cut. This is for the same reason as Moomoo Farm. I just don't see it coming back in a later game. Plus, it's a good first track for the retros, so I think it works well. The last thing I want to mention is that you'll notice that the order shifted. In the original game, the order for each cup was in the order of which track came first. SNES, N64, GBA, GCN. But I changed it, and you'll understand why at the end. The first new track I want to talk about is GBA Peach Circus Replacement, which I decided to swap with Riverside Park. While yes, Riverside Park is also a Mushroom Cup track, and therefore simple, I also think that it would be a lot better than just a simple circuit track. It would work well with the sound fonts on the DS too, which I think is always a bonus. Plus, it's got a more interesting layout, which will be faithfully recreated, unlike the 8 Deluxe remake. This also means I don't have to make any changes to any retro tracks, as Riverside Park was in the Booster Course Pass, a DLC notable for not giving two shits about repeating prior retros. The next track I want to talk about is GCN Luigi Circus replacement, Peach Beach. Now I also understand that this track is a basic track to choose, another Mushroom Cup track, but at the same time, anything is better than three circuits in one cup. Plus, this track would be easy to recreate, as it's not too big. Now I do acknowledge that this would mean that Peach Beach couldn't be in Mario Kart Wii, as the original set of retro tracks are new in every game. To that I say, put Baby Park in Mario Kart Wii in its placement. I don't like Baby Park, but at least the more chaotic nature of Mario Kart Wii's items, as well as the bikes, would make this track a lot more faithful and less... shit. I mean, it'd still suck, but not nearly as much. The next track I want to talk about is Donut Plains 1's replacement, Donut Plains 2. Wow, one interesting change! Honestly, there's no real reason to this. Donut Plains 1 just kinda sucks, and Donut Plains 2 is a little bit better. I like the theming, so I'm happy to keep it. Not much to talk about here. Now the next track I want to talk about is GCN Baby Park's replacement. That I want to replace with Daisy Cruiser. Daisy Cruiser is a little bit more ambitious than Nintendo would have wanted to go with when creating the retros for Mario Kart DS, but being real, it's 100% possible to recreate and would be miles better than Baby Park. Basically everything could be faithfully recreated as well. Now I do recognise that Daisy Cruiser would share the song with Peach Beach, but it's not like Nintendo ever cared about that in this game, so I won't either. 
as well as this, Daisy Cruiser could no longer be in Mario Kart 7. I would honestly replace it with Mushroom City. It's a track that the 3DS would be able to handle, and it's also a good track, which doesn't break from the fact that Mario Kart 7 has the best track selection in any Mario Kart game. Now the last track I want to talk about is a SNES track. I honestly have no idea why this isn't a thing, why they held back, but this is a track that very much deserved to be in this game, and it's criminal that we had to end the game on Yoshi Circuit over this track. The track in question was SNES Rainbow Road. Now, this may not come as a surprise, because I love this track, and I reordered the tracks in this game to put this last, because had I not done it, and still wanted a Rainbow Road in this game, I'd have to go with GCN Rainbow Road, which the hardware would not be able to handle. And after thinking about it, the only Rainbow Road I could see in this game is SNES. Now of course, like with Daisy Cruiser, this wouldn't be able to be in Mario Kart 7. And to be honest, I think I'd throw N64 Rainbow Road in there instead of 8 Deluxe, and put DS Rainbow Road in 8 Deluxe instead. There's basically no hope for it in the booster course pass at this point, so I'm fairly safe to say that I'd put it in 8 Deluxe over N64 Rainbow Road. Simply put it, Mario Kart 7 would do it justice, and would stay more faithful to the original, and be able to split it up into one big lap. This would leave room for SNES Rainbow Road to be in Mario Kart DS, and I don't think I'd want it any other way. And there we have it. That is how I would change the track selection in Mario Kart DS. I love this game to bits, but I still recognise that it has flaws. Is this the best track selection in any game? No, of course not. Is this better than the original track selection? Very much so. Is this the objective best track selection for this game? Well, that's an opinion, which you can share in the comments below. Let me know what you'd change, and leave a like on this video if you enjoyed. And until next time, goodbye.